Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Olivia. If this is your first time, then welcome. And if it's not, then welcome back. So today's video is gonna be a little bit more science-y. Um, basically, I'm going to talk today about something that, again, I keep mentioning and I keep saying the word and I don't know if I've ever like properly explained exactly what the concept is behind it. And that is something called chronic inflammation. Now, I usually make videos about eczema and that is sort of my focus because I spent this past year trying to heal myself from it naturally after having had it basically my entire life. But chronic inflammation, which is what I'm gonna talk about today, is actually something that is so relevant to everyone and everyone who, you know, just wants to lead a healthier lifestyle, make healthier life choices, and is also implicated in a lot of modern lifestyle illnesses. So I think if we all kind of knew a little bit more about it, it would definitely help to sort of prevent a lot of these very debilitating and very tragic lifestyle illnesses that happen to a lot of people. So going back to basics, an inflammatory response is basically something that happens when your body detects some kind of harmful substance, whether that's a bacteria, whether that's a you know, virus and some kind of, you know, an irritant or a chemical or a toxin or something like that. It can also be in a response to a type of trauma, so like an injury or if you twist your ankle or something like that. So what will happen then is your immune system will kick into action and it will start pumping out lots of proteins, lots of biochemicals and sort of kickstart all these different physiological processes in order to try and fight or try and heal this harmful event. So this is something that I'm sure we're all very familiar with. You know, for example, if you get a, a cut that gets infected, it gets hot, it gets very red and swollen. And this is an inflammatory response. It's something that we call acute inflammation. So acute inflammation is obviously super important for survival and just fighting diseases and injuries and infections and these kind of things obviously kept us alive for millions of years. But then we also have something called chronic inflammation, which is basically when your immune system continues to pump out these sort of pro-inflammatory um, biochemicals and proteins and that kind of thing in order to try and fight sort of like a lingering either like a substance or again like a lingering infection and eventually over time these pro-inflammatory biochemicals and processes will not only start to sort of fight the sort of the harm but also over time it will start to have an effect on all the healthy tissue and all the healthy organs and this is why it can lead to all sorts of problems. It can lead to things like autoimmune disorders, diabetes that's been implicated in brain illnesses, in rheumatoid arthritis, even things like depression. It can have a really, really adverse effect on your body over time. So how does chronic inflammation happen? And it can happen in two different ways. So firstly, it's either if you've had sort of an acute inflammation somewhere and for some reason the acute inflammatory response wasn't sufficient enough to kick out this harmful disease or substance or chemical whatever it was and so your immune system then responds by kind of swapping out the acute inflammatory response to sort of a more lingering and different proteins are involved in your state of chronic inflammation at this point. The second way that chronic inflammation is caused is through diet and lifestyle. There are things that we eat, especially like processed refined foods that have never been food for the millions of years that we've been alive and your body just doesn't really know what to do with them so recognizes them as something harmful and can send out these sort of lingering inflammatory biochemicals and proteins that sort of just circulate around your body because again it's trying to fight something but doesn't really know what it's fighting and it's basically not a good state for your body to be in at all. So a lot of studies have been done and they have shown that there are foods that are inflammatory versus anti-inflammatory. So there are foods that promote inflammation and cause this in inflammatory response in your body. And on the other hand, there are foods that sort of decrease inflammatory responses in your body, so the anti-inflammatory foods. So I'll make another dedicated video on inflammatory versus anti-inflammatory foods, but today I'll just give a very brief list of exactly the inflammatory foods that you want to avoid and you can kind of start avoiding today. So these are things like firstly sugar and especially white refined sugar, inflammatory. Secondly, white refined carbohydrates, flours and everything that that contains. So things like cookies, cakes, donuts, biscuits, basically all the yummy things. Thirdly, processed meats and processed animal products are shown to be inflammatory, but also just processed stuff generally. So even like processed non-meat alternatives, they can also be bad for you if they are very processed and they've got lots of chemicals and weird things in them. Basically, if you have a look at a food, if it's in a packet and you turn around the packet and you look at the ingredients, there's hundreds of ingredients, they've all got weird, funny names and E numbers and those kind of things. I would put it down. And finally, alcohol. I've made a video about why I don't drink alcohol. 
Alcohol is inflammatory. You should try and avoid drinking too much of it if you can. So if you can avoid eating these on a regular basis, I'm not saying cut them out altogether. Obviously a lot of those things are super yummy. So <laughs> I'd never say that, but just so that you're aware, so that you know that you don't have to eat them all the time or at every meal and just, you know, be very conscious of the fact that some things are good for you and some things are not good for you and they actually have a physiological effect inside your body. They've also shown that people who live to 100 years old, they consistently always, always, always have a very, very low level of inflammatory markers. And they've studied this in all the populations in all the blue zones. So blue zones are places where there is a higher prevalence of people who live to 100 or over. And they all have very, very low levels of inflammation and that's because they don't really eat any of the stuff and also they generally there's other lifestyle things that make them a lot healthier but this is a very very key and important component of their health so finally i want to talk about the link between chronic inflammation and eczema there isn't a huge amount of studies on this but what we do know is that eczema is an inflammatory problem we have too much inflammation in our skin so that's why it's itchy that's why it's red that's why we always want to scratch it and it often gets painful we don't know exactly what the root cause is i think it's very chicken and egg you know some studies say that it's to do with you know poor skin function and that causes you know more allergens to enter your skin others say that it's like an immune problem and that we just have immune responses to all sorts of things that we we shouldn't really have that too and that's all centered in the gut i mean i think i think it's going to be a component of, of all of these but what we definitely do know is that there is a higher prevalence of eczema and other inflammatory autoimmune skin disorders in people who have high levels of chronic inflammation so that basically goes to show that if nothing else chronic inflammation definitely exacerbates i.e makes eczema worse and it's definitely going to be a big obstacle to your healing if, if you're trying to do it naturally. I 100% find that when I eat foods that I know are inflammatory, so if I eat too much sugar, if I drink alcohol, if I have too many sort of refined carbohydrate type things, my skin starts to itch and it does definitely start to get worse and this isn't like a you know a psychological thing it's like i know that it's inflammatory therefore i think that it starts getting itchy no a hundred percent like it starts getting red it definitely definitely does make my eczema worse and since cutting these things out you know like i basically managed to heal it completely i never use steroids and I barely even use moisturizers and things like that, things that I really, really had to use a lot back in the day. So yeah, so basically that's all I wanted to talk about. That was a really hard video to film for some reason. <laughs> I found it really hard to like explain everything properly and I hope that was con coherent, but if anything was unclear, if you have any questions about anything that I said, then please do leave a comment down below. And in the meantime, please do like and please subscribe and I'll see you again very soon for another video. Mwah!